Normal pupillary function can be affected by a variety of pathologies, so a thorough assessment of this organ is very important. The examination of pupil function should include an assessment of pupil size, reactivity to light, as well as direct and consensual response. First, make sure all lights are appropriately dimmed. So I'm going to be shining a light in your eyes. Uh, just do your best to look in the distance as I do this, okay? Okay. A pen light is used to determine pupillary measurements. A pupil card with measurements or a ruler can be helpful to determine pupil size. When testing pupillary light reflex, the patient should fixate on a distant object. This prevents normal eye convergence, accommodation, and associated pupil constriction. Begin by checking the pupils for direct and consensual response. First, shine the light in the right eye and the pupil should react well by constricting. Shining the light in the left eye, you'll see that the pupil also constricts. This tells us both eyes have an intact direct response. To test for a consensual response, shine the light in the right eye while looking at the left eye. You can see that the left pupil constricts nicely. Then shine the light in the left eye while looking at the right eye. The right pupil constricts nicely as well, indicating that this is an intact consensual response. A swinging flashlight test is performed to assess if there is an RAPD or relative afferent pupillary defect present. First, shine the light in the right eye, observing the constriction of the right pupil, indicating an intact direct response of the right pupil. Observe that the left pupil constricts also, indicating an intact consensual response of the left pupil. Then, swing the light over to the left eye, taking only one or two seconds, the left pupil should remain constricted, indicating that the direct pupil response on the left is equal to the prior consensual response. Also, observe that the right pupil is still constricted, indicating that the consensual response for the right eye is equal to the prior direct response for the right eye. Now, swing the light back again to the right eye, observing that both pupils remain constricted, indicating the intact and equal direct pupil response of the right eye and consensual response of the left eye. If a relative afferent pupillary defect is present, the affected eye's pupil will not respond to an external stimulus like the pen light relative to the normal eye. For example, if the left pupil relative to the right eye has an afferent defect, we will observe the following in the swinging flashlight test. When light is shown on the right eye, both pupils will constrict because the direct response on the right and consensual response to the left eye are intact. However, when the light is switched from right to left eye, both pupils will dilate because the left afferent pathway is not detecting the light. The reason why the left pupil can still constrict on the consensual response is because the efferent pathway remains intact.